I'm a student teacher. I'm a student teacher of the master teacher, partner Bab Yanun. And he came on the planet saying, I've got 76 trillion years of knowledge. No one on the planet has ever come claiming that. Now, you would think for someone to make such a bold claim that they've got 76 trillion years of knowledge, that everyone will be lining up. And he put it to the test as well. So from um, 1970, or, right, officially, till the year 2000, a period of 30 years, he was um, available to anyone to ask him questions on anything. So what we're saying that no other organization, teacher, is going to have as much information that we have. So we're going to keep it coming. We're going to keep answering all your questions because even when I can't answer a question, we can get it to him, you know, and he will answer it. And even though he's retired because he stood the test of time for 30 years, he put out books to show who he is. So anyone can pick up a book and um, scrutinize it. And yeah, I might make some little mistakes here and there, but trust me, the mistakes we make, yeah, just like little slip of the tongues, because I read the comments. I do love reading the comments. And 90% um, of the comments are positive, or even 95%. But there's always a few, the 5 percenters that are like, oh, he made a mistake. He said 1966 instead of 1936. Yeah, I made a you know mistake. It's cool. But it's never going to be anything like serious. It might be like I might miss a little quote or um, mix two people's names, you know, things like that. But I'm just saying like we are actually human gods. So, you know, we can make mistakes. Um, the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, he is really what this is all about at the end of the day because he is the source of the information. That's why when I call people out like, you know, Bill Carson, Young Pharaoh, the Young Elder, 19 Keys and um, whoever else is out there teaching, polite. Um, a lot of them, if they're honest, they know the source of the information is coming from Dr. Malachi ZK York. So the most important thing we've got to do is get him released. Yeah, and if you want to help, if you want to support, go to freedoctoryork.com and, you know, donate, help whatever you can do spread the word because once he's out the information is going to go to a whole different level even before then we've got other teachers as i mentioned in the previous videos um that are going to be coming through um you know on osm vision or on our channel which is coming soon but yeah um dr york was putting out information such as is god an extraterrestrial yeah and this book it's a classic. We've got limited stock. So if you want to get hold of this, because this whole extraterrestrial thing, we keep going on about it. And I will clarify again, when we say extraterrestrial, we're not talking about, even though you see the reptilian on there, we're not talking about little green men. We're talking about all types of extraterrestrials. There are people who are walking the street that are descendants or their bloodline of extraterrestrials. Okay, this is another one ancient Egypt and the pharaohs because like they keep digging up trying to find out who was here first and the Egyptians were well known and they call themselves gods right so these gods are extraterrestrials so there's the type of gods that walk the planet earth and we mentioned before um, Psalms 82 6 John 10 34 um, these are telling you that you're God so they're different levels of gods and so we're living in a day and time another scroll does God help his own? Yeah. Because if you are of God, are you getting the help that you need to do whatever you need to do to push what you need to push? Are there UFOs in your midst? What is a UFO? Unidentified flying objects. Lots of people are now sighting UFOs. But even more importantly, there are IFOs. Because how can it be an unidentified flying object if you're actually identifying it? So they're really IFOs, or now they're calling it um, aerial phenomenon or something. Google it, you'll see that. These extraterrestrials are here because the Earth is a project and the mission is called Mission Earth. There are beings that have come here on a mission and things are um, unfolding as we speak. As you know, I mentioned about uh, the, the asteroid Apophis 
and uh, solar eclipse, which has come and gone, but a lot of different energy has been put on the planet. So um, we talked about the Antichrist, meaning there's real Christians and there's those that are against Christians. So the Antichrist, if you're part of the people that are following the wrong Christ, then there's going to be crisis. The planet is getting serious, especially this year, with all the rumours of war, you know, the war in, in Ukraine, the Palestine and, um, you know, what's going on with Israel. There are lots of things happening in the world today. And in order for you to be, do you know what I mean, in the right place at the right time, you need to get the right information. And this is what we call war sabbat. And so, um, yeah, we're here to answer more questions, um, address a number of things. One of the things I want to really talk about is the realness about mental health. Mental health. It's on the rise and it actually started to, to get worse since the, um, the pandemic or pandemic, as some people call it, you know, through COVID-19. Because for the first time, a lot of people were able to just stop and think and be at home or, you know, like with themselves, had to spend time going in and really thinking about what's going on with their life, what's going on with the world and the mental health. It's a serious thing. And when we speak and we tell you that you have a radio in your head, people are going to be like, what do you mean? Like you hear voices in your head, multiple voices. Even when you're thinking, you're hearing a voice, right? So the question is, where do the voices come from? We have, we've already broken down to you that you have four generations of ancestors within you that speak through you. And when we say four generations, we're talking about there's you who's at the top. Then you have your mother and father. That's layer one. Then you have, which would be your parents. Then the second level is going to be your um, mother and father's mother and father. So that would be your grandparents. Then the level below that, the third one, is going to be your great grandparents. And then, obviously, your great, great, great grandparents. So those are all those personalities with each one with their own levels of four. They're all speaking through you because you're like the DNA or genetic link to all of them. So you hear their voices in your head. Some of the voices are going to be positive or what we like to say is agreeable. And some of the voices are going to be negative or what we call disagreeable. You always have the two opposite sides and you're in the middle and you have willpower. But will is vague, meaning that until you decide to go either left or right or positive or negative or agreeable or disagreeable, it's in the middle. So you are in that seat and sometimes you allow your seat to be taken over. So a good analogy is like when you're driving a car and the word car Actually, it's not by coincidence because you, the Ka'a in ancient Egypt is your spirit. The Ba'a or the Ba is your soul. So the different personalities or ancestors within you are fighting to take control of the car, which is you. So when you're making decisions and when you're thinking, when you're going left or going right or doing positive or negative, this is all influenced by these personalities which are 30 in all, if you do the maths. And if, say, one of your parents or grandparents or great-great-grandparents have passed crossover, you have to subtract one. So then you'll have, let's say, one of them passed, you'll have 29 personalities as opposed to the full 30. If two have passed, you'll only have 28 personalities. So the reason I'm saying this is when we start to address mental health, you hear people say, People are schizophrenic, psychotic, they're mad, they're crazy because they say they hear voices in their heads. And some of these voices might influence them to do disagreeable things. And you also have, outside of your 30 personalities, you have disembodied beings that are roaming the planet. Beings that have not been able to cross over. Every night at 3 a.m., the gates open for beings that have passed to leave. And unfortunately, just like with any immigration control, some beings come through and some um, 
people like CERN, what they're doing is they smashing atoms together with the project um, using the hydrogen collider and they're opening portholes and gateways and, and all types of beings are coming through. Now, how does this relate to mental health? Well, when people hear voices in their head and sometimes they do crazy things, shoot someone, kill someone, do something, and they will say, the voice in my head told me to do this. When they go to mental institutions, they're given medication. How do they know what medication to, to prescribe to say that will stop you hearing voices? Why is it that people go to the graveyard to visit their loved ones and speak to the tombstones if they claim when you pass on you go to either heaven or you go to hell so it's either you're in hell or you're in heaven so why would you go to the graveyard and go and talk to the tombstone that in itself is admitting to you that there are beings disembodied beings and bodies that are trapped within the earth's atmosphere so when we start talking about the different ethers starting from you know like the demons, the beasts coming all the way up to, you know, like human, humankind, man, mammal, all the way up to like what we call a supreme being, which is the highest. These beings vibrate on different ether levels. So ether is like in everything. And if you're not in a conducive environment for you, you won't stay in there. So what we're saying is these voices and the mental health and the episodes and the things that people are having are partly due to these personalities and these beings. And then you have external beings as well as the things that are being done on the planet, frequencies that are being sent. Because think about it, a radio picks up radio waves and you can send a signal and you tune into that radio to that frequencies to pick up that information, just like the TV. Signals are sent and then your antenna picks it up, converts that into pictures. So you can convert sound into light and light into sound. Your iPads, your phones, these are, you look at the light, they have light because that light is converting the information into pictures for you. So the mental health pandemic has a lot to do with how you think, your mentality. So what do you think? The information you put into your, into your mind. And so when we say the religious world and um, the Bible, the Quran and all these religious books, which are influenced by these extraterrestrials that can send messages to you, it's not crazy because these books have you thinking like snakes can talk. They have you thinking things like a well can swallow up a man like in the story of Jonah and he's in the belly of a well for, for days. This is ludicrous because in the, the, the well's stomach is acid. You couldn't survive or live in it. How big does this world have to be anyway, first of all? The, these scriptures, these religious books, they have you thinking that there's a place called hell where you're going to go and be tortured and burnt forever and ever. They have you thinking they're things like unicorns and you know, all kinds of crazy things that people think. They have you thinking that if you make a mistake, you're doomed because now you're a sinner. And because you're a sinner, you're going to go to hell. This doesn't make sense from a caring, loving deity or God, right? So we, we keep mentioning these extraterrestrial beings that are passing themselves off as being good when they're actually not good at all. They're here to, to basically carry out their mission. They have a mission. Um, as, as I've mentioned previously in our book, we talk about these different extraterrestrials. We actually list the names of the extraterrestrials, give you the references where you can find them and what their agenda is. Not all of them are bad or disagreeable. You have those who have been living here before human life as we know it. They were living in the waters for millions of years, still do have advanced cities under water. You have those that live in the caverns. You have those that are in the skies and camouflage and hide with the, you know, the clouds and stuff. We have this girl called, um, 
are there UFOs in your midst? And um, so all of these beings are not here for, for good. Some of them, they want to take over the planet and, and make it their own. Some of them want to coexist and live peacefully and happily. And you have those who want to destroy the planet. So it's a very wide array of things that, um, that are going on. Then you have people like Elon Musk that are, are launching, you know, rockets all the time, trying to go, go out of here, get out of here. Um, you know, Richard Branson, certain people now, they're really heavily into space travel. So yes, um, when, we, we, when we teach Wu Sabat, Wu Sabat is the answer to the mental health pandemic because it teaches you to know that there's a big difference between knowing and believing something. It teaches you that there are ghosts um, roaming around that are influencing you, that are possessing you. Some people have the ability to see these apparitions or they call it doppy, you know, in um, certain circles. Um, some people hear these voices, some people actually see things, um, pe some people can see auras. It's all about how developed you are spiritually and of course your physical relates to your spiritual and your spiritual ties into your other beings, your etheric being, your soul being, your mental being. So really, Wu Sabat is a holistic doctrine that covers everything, like we cover the full circumference because in order to have a solution you have to have a solution that works for everyone so we were taught the three monotheistic religions you know islam judaism christianity and the many many flavors and in doing that in studying and reading our books you learn latin you learn the greek you learn the hebrew and of course you learn our language nuapik or mispatia it's all in the books now, a lot of people have become very lazy because of social media. They just watch videos and they just scroll, you know, 30 seconds, 90 seconds, one minute videos. You really do have to study and, and get the scrolls and read them. Because when you read and study, you have questions that come from your studies. And then we can address those questions. You know, some people just see this as entertainment. It's not just entertainment. It's, it's about changing people's lives. You know, and so when we read the comments and we're hearing the effect that it's having on people worldwide and the amount of people that are coming into the store and people that are hitting me up on a one to one and just saying how much, you know, what OSM Vision is doing has changed their lives. It makes it all worthwhile. And so we dedicate our lives to trying to give out the knowledge, you know, and freely we're, we are going to be. Um, launching um our online course we've been working on it quite hard and like the academy is going to be fully ready by next week where you're going to have all our classes that you know we do every week for free and obviously there'll be a couple paid ones but you're going to get a lot of free information in addition to that i'm going to be doing um a class this saturday yeah called unplug from the matrix with wu sabat now, for anyone who hasn't watched the movie The Matrix, um, obviously there's a trilogy or, I mean, there's so many of them now, but if you've never watched them, watch at least the first one, two, and three. Even the, the latest one I watched, it was really good. I loved the concept, the way that, even though, you know, Keanu Reeves has moved on in, in age or whatever, the way they actually turned it into a video game, I thought that was really smart. If you haven't seen The Matrix movies, um, watch them before you, you know, attend the class, which is on the 20th of April. And then the part two is going to be on the 27th of April. So it's termed unplug from the matrix with Wu Sabat because Wu Sabat has the ability to unplug you. And that means a lot of different things. So, you know, we want to, we want to help you show you how you can start to live a life of purpose where you're focusing on your spiritual being, you're focusing on, you know, your mental health, you're focusing on doing the things that will bring you reward and, you know, help other people because it is about love and unity at the end of the day. You're never going to um, please everyone all the time. So there will, will always be those who say, oh, this is a load of crap or whatever, but that's down to them. Everyone has their choice, but what we know is 
that it is actually making such a massive difference. It's changed my life and this is why I'm so passionate about Wusabat and I will um, continue to teach Wusabat, uh, you know, as long as I'm still breathing. But yeah, so um, that's the workshop coming up. The academy is coming up. Our book is doing well. Um, we, we just keep running out, but, you know, it's constantly uh, on demand. And that's how, another way you can help us, you know, support us so that we can actually keep doing this and give you the knowledge weekly, regularly, so that you can ask all your questions and we will answer them. And then, you know, we can come back the next week and, you know, answer them, you know, more questions. So, yeah. You know, you was just talking about... Um was it The Matrix? Yeah. And in The Matrix film, it's the same, it's a black woman that made that, isn't it? Yeah. And is it the same person that made Terminator? Terminator, yes. What's the correlation between the two films? Right, she said that, um, I'm trying to remember the way around she said it. She said that Terminator was the, the prequel to The Matrix. So Terminator is before the Matrix. Yeah, and it's and then and then the Neon travel. is is born from from that from the time travel to come to the future and deal with, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why she said it. But yeah, it was amazing because you know the whole story is like um, they tried to steal it from her, innit? Like she wrote the book. Yeah. And the the the, the brothers that made the the movie, yeah. they they didn't want to pay her, and then she had to sue them, and then she won the case. And then she got her money. And then um, obviously, yeah, then she had to reveal all the other, like like the Terminator and all the other things that she has uh, written. How, how do you think she come up with that then? Do you reckon that she, she was... was all right, that's an excellent question. This is what I'm saying about hearing voices in your head, yeah? Even like we were talking about like the Simpsons. The Simpsons who people say like even all now, they're saying how they predicted how Donald Trump was going to be in power and so on. Mm. And... Um, I was touching about hearing voices in your head, like even in, uh, you know, the Bible stories, because a lot of people say, this is why people believe the Bible, because some things in the Bible actually happen or come to, ha to, you know, to fruition. And even though we will say, okay, they were copied and plagiarized from ancient tablets, they're like, well, how comes this happening now? And I mentioned before that these extraterrestrials, like, for example, Gabriel, he's able to time travel and go back in time. In, and how do you know that? Because you see him meeting people in the Old Testament, which is thousands of years, and then you see him meeting people in the time period of Jesus, which is 2,000 years ago. So how can he be in different time zones at the same time? I'm saying that to say that extraterrestrials technology, they can break the time barrier, meaning the speed of light. When you break the speed of light, you can travel at warp speed and you can jump. And I mentioned um, a few movies that you can look at this. Oh yeah, last time as well, when I mentioned the movie, I said Bruce Willis was in the movie, yeah? When I was talking about the asteroid Apophis and what they're doing with that. I said Bruce Willis, but, and I said um, Deep Impact, but the movie was actually Armageddon. Even though Deep Impact was of, of the same thing, but Bruce Willis is not in that one. He is in Armageddon. So if you didn't get to watch Armageddon, watch that now because they tell you exactly what's happening now, yeah? So these extraterrestrials travel between the past and the future, and we can as well. And you can, when you travel back in time, you're all right, you can come back. But when you travel into the future, you can lose your life, as in the amount of time you have in the physical life. So traveling to the future is actually worse because you can lose time of, your, of yourself. What do you mean? Like, okay, you know, if you're traveling in a car, yeah? Yeah. There is like a, a speed limit. And if you're traveling faster, you age. And there are machines that they use that can regress you. Like if you travel um, faster than, you know what I mean, the normal speed you're supposed to be traveling, you can actually age. But then if you break the time barrier, it's like, imagine how you're living now, yeah? You have a certain amount of time that you're going to live. But if I was to fast forward the time, like really speed it up, it's like I'm speeding up your, your years. And that's what happens when you're traveling because your, your physical body can't withstand certain um, like pressures. That's why you age as you get older. But when you break the time barrier, you can actually become younger because you can um, like arrive. Even when people go to space, yeah, like uh, astronauts, they tell you they can, they can come back 
and they will be younger or like because of the different time belt basically that's how it happens and there are machines that the government have had if you read the scroll man from planet risk by Ma dr malachi z york he explains this in in great detail how they can regress you back to a baby or speed you up to a, an, an adult or an elder because it's all to do with the technology of how you're able to manipulate and speed um you know, like your your molecules and things like that. So does that mean that Gabriel is from the future? Yeah. So he's from. Is he from our future now? Doctor York's from our future now, as okay. in the being doc, um, Yanun. Yeah. And when they get you to explain Yanun as well, but when yeah. you say they're from our future, so yeah. they've come back to give information. That's right. Because of what they've seen. That's what, right. What's, what's the reason they've done that? Right. So even just not to take it, make it too deep. Yeah. There are people who say. They've been abducted by extraterrestrials, taken away, taken to a craft, and they show them their future, the future of what's going to happen. And they say to them, come back and try and help humanity and warn people of what's, what we're doing. Because if we carry on on the same path, like destroying the water, destroying the planet, destroying the things that our planet rely on, we can end up destroying the planet. Like, for example, when they dropped the atomic bomb in Nagasaki yeah, and Hiroshima, in the in the wars they risked like because it's the first time they were using like atomic bomb on that level they they risk cracking the entire planet and remember what i said before that you have beings that live in the waters beings that live in the caverns beings that are actually here on this in the atmosphere and they didn't want that so they had to put a stop to it this is why there were crafts that were seen over the white house in 1945 i put that in our book um you know um the fast track spiritual and conscious journey like we put a lot of information in there so yeah this is what they do they they come back or they warn you of the the path you're on the thing is extraterrestrials are not really allowed to interfere with our natural development as a species but what they can do is influence certain people to help because they're not like because Okay, we have laws on the planet that like we have the United Nations laws. We have within our jurisdictions, we will have like um, here we have magistrates court. Then we will have like um, um, crown court, and in America they will have like state courts, and then they will have federal courts. And outside of the planet, you have galactical laws, and you have beings from different galaxies that attend these meetings. And one of the places they attend the meeting is Mount Shasta, which Again, we have a book called um, the Akasha Records that talk about this. And Yanun, as in Dr. York, the being that speaks through Dr. York, he attends these meetings. So you have something called the Galactical Federation. The Galactical Federation is a federation like the United Nations, but made up of different extraterrestrials from different galaxies because they all have a stake in what's going on on the planet because the planet is a part of the solar system. And the solar system um, is a part of the galaxy. And our galaxy, which is the 18th galaxy, is next door to the 19th galaxy. The 19th galaxy is where Yanun comes from, right? From a planet called Risk in a you know, place called Ilion. And, and so if something happens on the 18th galaxy, it will affect the 19th galaxy and the 19th galaxy will affect all the other galaxies. So it can be like a ricochet effect, right? Like a dominoes effect. So it's not as simple as us just being irresponsible on the planet. Like, you know what I mean? Firing missiles and blowing up things with atomic bombs because it can have a, a, a catastrophic effect on all the other beings. This is why they will step in when it's going to get to a point where it's going to affect them. So they will step in they will send all these people, people call like, you know, your Muhammad and your Jesus. And because Jesus' real name in the galactical level is Sananda or Sananda, right? And Gabriel and all these people, they will send them to come, give humanity information and say, live like this. But then the disagreeable, because you have the disagreeable I mentioned already, the Antichrist, people that like Nana and who he also has his own agents on the planet. Because again, if you go back to the biblical text, it says in Revelation 12, 7, there was a war in the heavens. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angel. And um, they, they lost the dragon. This is where the word dragon ties into Draco. These beings are from the Draco constellation. 
the draconian beings. That's what they are. They're reptilian beings. And a lot of them, they just want to go over, go over to other places, take over, rule, and they basically create a lot of chaos. Then you have the agreeable ones like Michael or the word Michael is Mikhail. In, in different languages, it will be a different tone. Mikhail or Murdoch or Marduk. And he is the archangel. They call him Michael or Mikhail. And his job is to, it depends on how you translate it as well from what language. It's like who dares to be like El. He is the warring angel. He is the one that protects the good side. And he's got his army or his angels. And the word angel in Greek is angelos. And in the Hebrew, that will be um, Malachi. And Malachi means my angel. And if you read the books of Malachi, which is like the last chapter in the Old Testament, that's like, read um, chapter 4, verse 2. It talks about Malachi coming with the son of righteousness, which is going to be the, the time period we're in now, the sun cycle. And, um, and then the last book in the New Testament is the book of Revelation, which is dealing with this angel that's coming. People think it's Jesus, but it says that it's Jesus' book. John had the vision and it's Jesus' book and my angel, Mikael, that's the angel that's coming to pour out and um, open the seventh seal, which is giving the information to the world and telling us all these things that are coming and what's going to happen and how you should get yourself prepared and basically clean yourself inside out with Wu Sabat. Yeah. So when you said that that Jesus is is up there as well, is it the actual Jesus that they say was crucified on the cross? Is it him that's up there in the meetings? Right. So what your good question? I didn't kind of finish that. So what religion has done? It has taken these real stories, true stories, as given to us by the ancients, and made them into like they've basically turned it into misinformation and given you like the wrong stories of what's actually really going on so when i say um Senenda, this is is that jesus that's who people will call jesus Senenda. yeah cool. but his name's not jesus it's that's what I'm, what I'm saying that in the but would that be the same person that people say yeshua yeah is that the same person as Senenda? right yeah okay but what i'm saying is there's different yeshuas and different christ and different and people mix them up so it's not it, just one person? No, that's okay. what I'm saying. It's like in the Bible, yeah. they have three Jesuses that are put into one story. Okay. So like, for example, you've got Yeshua, then you've got Bar Jesus. The word Bar is left untranslated because remember the Bible is translated and in the Hebrew, in the, in the Arabic, it would be like Bin or Ibn. Yeah. Um, so they've left Bar, which literally means son. So when you say Bar Jesus, you're saying son of Jesus because... Jesus did have children, as I've said as well. And then you have the third Jesus, who is known as Cleophas, which is the son of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. So the three of them, so you had Yahshua, who had a son, whose name is Bar Jesus. And then you have Cleophas, which is the son of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. And so there are three stories. One of them went to India and he was teaching and he got into the Kabbalah and all that kind of stuff. And he was being persecuted. So when they said like he was crucified, that was not the real Jesus or the Yeshua. Yeah? But what I'm saying is every person has a galactical name or their spiritual being. That's where the name Sananda comes in, because that would be the spiritual being. Just like Dr. York, he's here as a physical being on the planet. But the real essence of him is Yanun in the intergalactical level. You see, so that's why people get confused. So even yourself, even myself, when you're born, you go through different titles. And as you progress in your development and your attainment in terms of your, how you're raising yourself, you get initiated into certain orders and then you get your names. So you have your birth name, your life name and your death name, where in ancient Egypt, the people will try and get those tones because when you're crossing over, you go through certain for lack of a better word, um, examination to, to get, you know, allowed into certain gates and then you'd have to answer some questions and one of them would be your name. You see how you said examination? Yeah. In the Bible, you know how there's going to be a judgment day in the Quran, it's going to be a judgment day, the, yeah. the Quran's going to be wiped, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Is that going to happen to humans on this earth? Are they going to be accountable for their actions? And if they are, yeah. who is it that's going to hold them accountable? Everyone is accountable. Um, and there are different types of 
judgments, right? If I, I can say, if I said to you, and this is what the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, told us many years ago, he said, I'm not going to be judged. He's and, not going to be judged or everyone's not. No, he said that at the time. Okay. And everybody was like, what do you mean you're not going to be judged? And he explained it. This is what I'm about to explain to you. You judge yourself every day. Meaning that the decisions you make, the, the uh, accumulation of all your decisions will become your final judgment. So, for example... If you know that you shouldn't smoke, right? And smoking is bad for you. You decide to smoke, right? So if you keep smoking for many, many, many years, and let's say you did get lung cancer or something happens, it was the, the, the judgment that you put on yourself. So there's judgment as in, if you know what to do, you will do it and you will not be judged. So if you tell the truth, you don't lie, you don't steal, you don't rape, you don't murder, you don't drink alcohol you don't do all of these things then you're judging yourself because it's up to you to decide what's good or bad now there's levels of judgment in ancient times when you were crossing over there's a, a, a judgment and you have your ancestors who as i mentioned before that speak to you through you and in your mind and when you're crossing over you'll have the good ones that are waiting to help you cross over because we don't die as we said because energy cannot be destroyed so what it is is will you make it to the other level or the other states if you don't make it based on the fact that you haven't raised your vibration or your um development to a certain level then you just come right back and this is why people see the white light or the that's a wormhole where they come back through to this to be re um basically go through the through the the schooling again so yes you judge yourself but there's no judgment like the way how the religious world interpret it where you go to hell and get like burned forever um, there is a judgment in the sense where like I was saying like you can be trapped on this planet as, and roaming as a disembodied being or soul because you were not able to make it there is also another judgment in the in the sense that you have 24 to 24,000 chances to pass the examination, if you want to use that term. And every time you fail and you come back, it's your opportunity to fix up. And so when you come back, a lot of times you choose your parents. You choose the parents to come through because there may be something that you didn't do that you needed to do. And this time round, let's say, for example, I was supposed to be a football player. And I didn't make it in the last time. When I'm coming back this time, I'm going to try and come through parents that are excellent football players or like they can get me to where I need to go. That's just a little example. But so um, if, you, if you waste all your cycles and you get to your last time and you don't make it, then you dissipate. Meaning like you cease to exist in the form where you can come back and have the chances to make it to, to go to higher realms and live a, a different an, or existence, shall I say, because there's a difference between existence and creation, right? You exist before you are created and you can go on to other realms, um, other galaxies, other solar system and, you know, continue learning because you never really stop learning. So it all depends on, on you, why you're judged or how you're judged. What would prevent a soul from being able to pass over? Right. If, if you still have a soul, um, what will prevent it is if it's not strong enough. Um, meaning that, I'm trying to think of a simple example. Like if you had to, yeah, okay. Say, let's say you needed a certain amount of strength or muscles to be able to lift something up and you're, you didn't make the grade, meaning that you can't lift that thing up. You can either go and push weights and then get stronger and then you can do it. So I'm saying that to say your soul has to be vibrating or in terms of energetically, it has to be strong enough to transcend the different realms. Yeah, so that's why the spiritual practices, the things you do to, to deal with raising your vibration, um, energy helps you. I gave an example before using the battery as an analogy where I was saying like, if you don't charge your battery, fully charge, like if you have a mobile phone, your phone can still work, if you, even if you're on to like two, three percent. 
but if you allow it to get to the point where it is um zero percent but it, and it can't even be charged anymore then your phone that battery is dead there's nothing you can do about it but as it's on five percent you can recharge it and you might charge it to 40 percent or 50 percent which will last you a certain amount of time but if you had a hundred percent you just feel confident you feel like yeah my battery's gonna last me for what two three days and so the soul using that example is the same where at the time you're crossing if your soul is not fully charged you won't you won't get so far it's like the fuel you have to travel to get to where you need to get to so you have to constantly make sure that for lack of a better word your battery is charged fully and that comes with when you get up every day what do you do what do you eat what do you think what do you put into your body like what spiritual practices you do you do do you fast do you or are you easily influenced by the surroundings and the voices and the, you know what I mean, the, the, the infrared um, signals, the, the gamma rays and all the stuff that's in the atmosphere. So this is why it's such an important um, thing to clean yourself up with the herbs, um, have positive thoughts and vibrations, do positive works, help people, help humanity, um, love. Your seats actually help you because... Your heart seat is the love one, the divine love, not lust. Um, like I mentioned again, it's in the book, um, the nine mental diseases. You've got to be able to not eradicate them. I mean, I use that word a lot, but it's like because it's there, but you don't you don't exercise it. Like you, you have ego, for example. Yeah, that's one of the, the um, nine mental diseases. Ego is not necessarily a bad thing because... It helps you to have confidence and so on. But ego in the wrong way is a bad thing. So it's about, you know, like all these, these things you do, you've got to be able to like have it balanced. And that's one of the names of Wusabat or Wunwap. It's about balance because you lean one degree or one way, either way, um, it can become, you know what I mean, unbalanced. And the beings that know this, they use things like marketing and advertising to influence your choices so all day long you're bombarded with adverts and these days it's like social media it's uh, it's like you might go on your computer or go on your phone to do something positive and then you know what i mean you're gonna see something come up that's gonna distract you before you know it you're scrolling for hours and you weren't supposed to be doing that so um, the web is one of those things that is used to catch its prey remember i was saying about prey pra and pre the, the, where you, the spider sets up a web with all of these, you know, uh, like a net to catch its prey. And um, yeah, so you have to always be on your, as they say, on your P's and Q's or be on the point in terms of your, you know, what your existence is all about. You know, you can hear unfavorable voices in your head. Yeah. Let's say someone's heard these voices in their head and then they commit a crime like murder. Yeah. What would be the appropriate justice system for them? Well, the appropriate justice system is the fact that if you were in control of your mind, you, you, that wouldn't happen. You were hearing be, the voices in the first place. You would hear the voices. You can hear the voices, but it's what you do. How do you respond? R-E-S-P-A-W-N. Not respond. Respawn. Yeah, respawn. Thank you. I, I speak a lot of different languages, you know, so sometimes no, 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 my words... No, respond. What, what do you mean? Like, come back? Yeah, but I've I, I done that on purpose. So, so, so when you research that word, yeah. you will see like basically someone can make you do something mm. without you knowing that they're making you do it. But if you're aware that they're trying to make you do something, you can actually respond in a certain way where you stop it. So it's not the fact that you hear the voices because you could just be walking down the road and you're going to pick up a thought because thoughts are actually physical. You know, they have a color, they have a weight they have a vibration. So what we're saying is that it's down to you. This is why you have to constantly be in balance where you're in control of your thoughts. And so that's why people will say, I heard a voice. Now, what happens is the voices affect you emotionally because it's a, it's a vibration. So like a lot of people will do something because they're angry. But if they were calm and aware of the emotions, because remember, emotions is energy in motion. So if I know how to send you energy or aggravate you or like do something to make you red, in that moment, another entity can jump into you, 
get you to go, no, I can't take what that person just done to me. Maybe say do a madness, stab them, whatever, and they will leave your body. And you're now left there afterwards thinking, look what I've done. And now you're going to jail. And it wasn't even you. You're going to try and tell the police or go to court and say, listen, it wasn't me. I heard this voice that told me to do it. They're going to say, yeah, yeah, all right. Then you're going into the mental hospital. You know, you know what I mean? But and um, another movie that shows you this is um, Fallen with Denzel Washington. It shows you how these entities can literally jump from body to body. And even in Islam, we call them jinns, yeah, which are disagreeable beings. And the word jinns is not a coincidence because the alcohol, which is ethanol, right? Remember, you're not ether, you have ether already. But when you add more ethanol or ether into you, where people drink for relaxation or well, they think it's for, as they say, recreation, for it's really rec creation, because... When you're drinking and you get to a limit where you're drunk, now your mental faculties are inhibited. Now people, because when people are drunk, they will just do things and like, so later on they'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm sober now. But the point I'm making is that these beings, these frequencies that are being sent, this is what was happening in Genesis 11, where the Anunnaki were broadcasting certain messages and signals to the people to keep them in control and in check and they had them in control. But then when Nimrod or Sargon came and he um, went to Africa, because remember, he's the son of Kush. He went to Africa and then he learned his native tongue, right, which is Sabaic, or we say Misbatia or Nuapik. And when he came back, he was able to teach his people and they were able to cut off the frequencies. So what I'm saying is that even now, this is happening today, where you're getting all these frequencies, all these messages and certain things are sent to you. You can call it marketing or advertising or the billboards or, you know, the commercials or on, on your YouTube or whatever. You see all these constant adverts that are popping up and you decide on whether you're not you're going to go and do what they're telling you to do or not. So, yeah, you're right that the judgment will only come if you do if you actually do the action. And to prevent the action, you've got to have a sound mind yeah, in a clean body. You know what I mean? In the spiritual body so that you're moving righteously. So you know what, what to do and, and not to react emotionally to everything. And you notice most people who are calm, generally they can kind of talk their way out of a situation. So you see these voices, should they be treated or should we just be taught how to manage them? Thank you. This goes back to the point I made at the beginning about mental health. Like a lot of people are in mental institutions with a sometimes premature um, diagnosis because people that they know about these voices because remember if they're going to tell you when you say they who do you mean right so i'm saying in mental institutions they have medication that they will prescribe to people that have had a psychotic experience or mental kind of issues and they're telling people they're hearing voices in their head but because they don't know how to really deal with it because a lot of it is spiritual and mental they will subscribe drugs right and when you start taking these drugs you become dependent on the drugs after a while and a lot of people who have had who i've spoken to have known have dealt with you know through experience that have come off of the medication some of them had to really dig deep to come off of it and wean themselves off and so what i'm saying is if they can prescribe a drug that will stop the voices that means they know that there's something that can be done about it, yeah? But the thing is that not everyone is qualified on those levels. And when you talk and tell people you're hearing these voices, they just say, do you know what I mean? You're, you're loopy or cuckoo or, you know, all these terms, right? So what we're saying is what Wusabat does is, first of all, you might not even be aware of it. The first thing is you're taught about these multiple personalities. This is why they term it multiple personality disorder. They say it's a disorder, meaning disorder means it's not in order. And when you're in order, you're thinking correctly and you're managing yourself and you're able to manage these voices. And how you deal with them is to silence them. Like, for example, many addictions come from way of you not being able to have willpower to say, I'm going to be in control of that addiction. That could be cigarettes, as I mentioned, it could be anything, sex. And so when you're in control, when you hear the voice, it might even be like, go and buy that cake. You love that cake. Every time they put in the advert, oh, I can't help it, man, I gotta get this cake. 
but that cake is going to bring let's say a lot of sugar to you the sugar is going to end up giving you some kind of arthritis or some kind of ailment and so by governing your mind your mind is the most powerful force and thing that you have because that's what helps you make decisions so by silencing the voices they subside after a while you won't hear them so when we're saying we're now in the night ether cycle or the sun cycle and people think everything's going to happen overnight it doesn't work like that it's like this room if i'm not a smoker and i came in this room and it was filled with a lot of smoke i will be uncomfortable in it i might start coughing i feel uncomfortable i don't want to be in the room and i can either stay in the room and wait till the smoke clears or i can open the windows and let it out so when we're dealing with six e for forces leviathan forces these are forces that are in the atmosphere and these forces are affecting people who are not aware of them these these this is what you hear by voices the same like extraterrestrials that are affecting you your dreams when you go to sleep you know when you're watching the tv all these voices all this stuff is coming to you but if you're not aware of it it's going to affect you so when you become aware of it you every time you hear that voice you say like for example let me give you a good example someone wants to stop smoking and they tried and they tried and they've tried they have to be able to go you know what i want to stop that's the first step the intentions then the second thing is every time you get the urge to smoke and there are certain times when you're going to want to smoke like after a meal or do you know what I mean when you're socializing with friends or peer pressure from your friends it could be anything it could be skunk it could be weed it could be anything but i'm just using the cigarette right every time you hear that voice you're either gonna say yes i'm gonna go and buy a cigarette or smoke or not and if you stop and you don't entertain that voice for a long period of time you will stop smoking but you can also do things like eat green apples because the pectin in the apples will help deal with cravings you know so there are many things you can do um but don't substitute one vice for another you know like you'd be like okay i want to stop smoking cigarettes and then you start drinking alcohol <laughs> and then you drink alcohol and that becomes an addiction so you've got to be able to be serious about what are the benefits of you stopping you know i mean they'll tell you within 24 hours your health improves so much when you stop smoking and obviously the longer the better then you start breathing properly and then you start to your lungs start to work and because of the process of um uh, elect what's it called um i can't put i know the word i'm trying to pronounce it elect plasticity electroplasticity i think um it's a process where you're generating new neurons all the time neuroplasticity that's it um you're able to regenerate new cells new limbs we used to be able to regrow our own arms and everything so this is why you scab when you cut yourself so you're, you're sure your body trying to knit itself back and reheal you know so i'm saying that once you stop your you can regenerate your lungs your organs and things like that um and then you get better and you can heal this one's slightly off topic yeah yeah but why does why do you all say scrolls instead of books oh okay because in the old times um that's what things were written in scrolls they were rolled up and then they used to pull them out even if you see like old like victorian movies where the king is sending information to someone they have them in a scroll and then they pull it out and read it um and originally most of the recordings were written in papyruses you What's know that? in ancient oh um in egypt um before paper was kind of popular in in the western world they were writing on papyrus which is like um made from natural like let's say leaves um but it was put together and they could write on it before paper and um in ancient times as well they talk about tablets you know like moses had the ten commandments on a tablet um and and again that was really ancient technology which has become a tablet that apple have come out with now but um ancient technology for the extraterrestrials because they're so far advanced that a lot of the technologies that we have today we think is new but it's actually not um they've got levels of technology way way beyond what we have so when, yeah. when they're saying tablet they they meant an electronic type of tablet, yeah like what we have today like ipad yeah they're called um the me stones yeah so the me stones were crystals 
they were actually made of crystals and they show you in the movies as well because crystals have the ability to hold a lot of information so like the akasha records or even like um what people call the kama sutra the kama sutra is a red me stone like uh, the best way of explaining this is did you, did you ever watch the movie superman no all right so I know it though. yeah yeah in the movie superman yeah. which is actually a very good story of explaining what happened before beings came to this planet but uh, in the movie Superman, um, their planet was being destroyed and they put the baby, the mother and father put Superman, the baby, into a little craft and sent him to Earth. But they put these crystals in, in his um, craft. And then obviously he crashed into the planet and then um, Clark, um, the Kent, the, the people that found him, they basically waited till he grew up and then he went to the like antarctic and he threw this crystal and when he threw the crystal like a whole city came up and then he he was able to get the whole story all the information that his dad and his mom put for him yeah, it's like that so that's a way of you can look at it and now they're using even like the new um processors on computers they're using like melanin because melanin what, sorry melanin melanin like yeah. what's in the skin yeah Okay. Uh, melanin is in everything. It's just that we, as Negroes, um, we we reproduce it a lot. So we that's why we we we're very highly pigmented, yeah, and that's why we're dark. But you have neuro melanin. You have melanin in everything on the planet. But it's very it's a high resistant. It, when you start studying melanin and what it can do, now they're using it as um, to use as you know like processes or information to hold more information. So. Yeah, but crystals and melanin, because we are actually crystal beings as well. And what, they're, they're using that in computers? Yeah, yeah, like, like you know, quantum computers now? Yeah. Yeah, like, because um, if you've ever followed the evolution of technology, especially computers, you know what I mean? Like, each generation of processors, they get, like, faster and faster, and the amount of memory, that even memory, like RAM, and st like, everything's getting smaller and smaller, but it can hold more and more information. Because a lot of it is light information. Light? Yeah. yeah. Like information mean? is recorded on light. Oh, photons. like what you're saying about it can be converted into images. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you know about CERN and how yeah. they were doing It's the Hydron Collider. Yeah. I know. I think they turned it on in 2012. Yes, that's right. Do you think right. that they caused the Mandela effect? I don't know if they caused the Mandela effect per se, but they and are can, messing... Can you explain that as well, the Mandela effect? Um... Okay, the Mandela effect is kind of like where people are always like, things have happened um, or things that have happened before, they knew it was there, but when they go back and look at it, it's different. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, like if I say to people, do you remember the Kennedy assassination? Yeah. There will be, in your head, you will have one version of what happened, right? So if I was to say to you, do you remember the car that was driving? Yeah. You say, yeah. And I'll say, how many doors were on the car? And you you might say something like, do you remember how many doors were on the car? Do you know what? I, I can't lie. Because I've seen this one as well. I know yeah. it was either four doors yeah. or, or it's like three and three. Right. This is what people would do because yeah. it's like but the I, I detail. Yeah. I watched that the other day, the Kennedy assassination. Yeah. And it actually looks like the driver turns back right. and shoots. Right. So I don't know because apparently it was snipers and CIA. Right. And right. So what, what it is, is I also mentioned in another video about trigger words here yeah, because, and I mentioned the boys from Brazil and certain beings that are programmed um, or even clones and stuff that are programmed to carry out assassinations and all kinds of stuff. But um, going back to the question you asked, it's like you think you're 100% sure you remember something, but when you go back and look at it, it's not that. Like, you'll be like, how? how I was 100% sure it was like this. Yeah, so like the Mandela effect is like something where information over time in history is messed up with and there was an excellent netflix series i can't remember the name of it but it's where you have these people they have a craft and they go back in time and in that they tell you all the things in the history of the planet that have happened like 
how certain people were chosen to be presidents and they were going to be presidents and um, you know what was going to happen in like world war I must remember to try and find that and tell you what it is but it's just things that you're so sure you know but then when you go back and look at it it's completely different and then you start to think to yourself is it me or has society changed like a friend of mine called me one time no lie he was like have you ever seen mushrooms that are a particular color or something that we all knew was a certain color and i was like what are you talking about so he's googled it and he's seen all these mushrooms that apparently exist or like bananas or something do you know what i mean it's like so it's, it's the ability to twist with your with your memory and your recollection of things and how history has been changed to even match the narrative and people thinking it never happened. So basically, they can act, they can sway people. And I think this is part of the reason why people like um, Zuckerberg from Facebook um, and certain people that have so much influence or power um, where they can make people vote, you know what I mean, for certain people to win elections and stuff like that, where they bring them now to court to say, like, you have too much control, you know what I mean? But uh, I hope that that helped but um so what do you think caused the mandela effect then because a lot of people are literally only started noticing it from 2012 yeah that, that's what i'm saying a lot of people only start it's like it's like when you wake up to something until you wake up to it it doesn't exist to you like for example people say how come i've never heard of what's about where was what's about all, all my life like if you look at that like how comes we've never heard of you and it was like yeah it wasn't your time you weren't you weren't vibrating on the right vibrational frequency at the time and now you are it's like even when you read a book or a scroll when you go back to it you read it again you're like how did i not see this information before so for example the way we break down the bible now like especially like genesis the first part where we say someone says in the beginning god created the heavens and earth and we like who's talking you would have never seen that before like people wouldn't think yeah, who is talking? Because they're saying, let us make God in our image and our likeness, whereas you wouldn't see it like it's been in the third person. So a lot of the times it's down to you, how you are at the moment where when you wake up or when you start to, as you say, have your spiritual awakening. Because people say, why well, I used to be asleep? And sleep is literally like you're walking around, you can see, but you're not awake. And we call this walking the walking dead or the zombies like and they're now showing you a lot of zombie movies the zombie apocalypse because a lot of people are just walking around waiting to be triggered by certain trigger words or certain occurrences that are going to take place you know so it all comes down to you so yeah. what, what is your definition of god or a god there are many definitions the simple one is anyone or anything that's in control in control of what? Of yourself, for start. Yeah, because people will say, they will do something and they will say, thank God. Or like, or like in Islam, yeah, every day you hear people say, inshallah, right? Which basically means that if I say, I'll meet you tomorrow, they will say, yeah, inshallah. Which means that if Allah wills it, then I will meet you. But if you don't show up or don't turn up, I'm not going to meet you. So it's really, it's not inshallah, it's in you. Because they're basically, and I get it because it's like you're giving the glory or the grace to say like someone else. But it's not someone else. And this is what we keep trying to explain to people that there are different types of gods, yeah? Even though in the, the Bible or the books that you even hear about that word for the first time, it's in, um, in Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we're like, okay... Like, if no one ever mentioned that word to you ever in your life, let's say you lived in the deepest forest, never came across the Bible, and you just live in your life every day, and you die, are you going to go to hell? Because the, the, the Bible and the Quran and these books only take effect when you know they're around and then you believe them. Up until that point, they don't exist to you. So you're the one that's governing yourself with whatever you're doing. So you're the first God first of all and then if you want to take it further from there you'll be like okay who created me and you meet people this is what i was saying about mental health you meet people and you ask them 
who created you? And they will say, God. And you say, how did he create you? Because in all religions, yeah, they say God is unseen or they say he's seen. They say he's everywhere or he's only in one place. Like he's everywhere, but he's in heaven. He's unseen because you can't see him. But then the prophets meet and see him in the Bible. They will say he's all powerful. Then he can't do certain things. You say he's all powerful, but he can't get rid of the devil. And he's all powerful, but he can't get rid of sin on the planet. So it's not all powerful, is he? This is mental health issues because you're being told one thing. But when it comes down to, all right, let's, let's put it to the test. You can't do it. That's why we have the books because does God help his own? You help yourself. You have to get up and do the things you want to do. And so the first God is you. The second God who created you is your parents because that's scientific fact. Your mom and dad came together, had sex. The sperm went to the ovum and then you grew. Yeah, that's one level. Now we go to, okay, this is the question that always comes up. Well, who created my parents? We say their parents, who created them? And it goes on and on and on and on. Then you go to, okay, what is the essence of existence to make creation? Then you go to beings that are far intelligent. So you start to get, get to the uh, extraterrestrials. And then you're like, who are these extraterrestrials? They're like us, but they've evolved for thousands of years. They've got more technology, they're more advanced. They can now break the time speed um, travel beyond the speed of light, go to other planets, have all kinds of cures and technologies. They give this some of this uh, technology to people on the planet. So then you have a level of different extraterrestrials that can do this. And you say, where do they come from? Then you go into their time zones, which has nothing to do with our planet. Um, 365 days and the clock and the time that we use to govern ourselves because you're outside of the time zone. They tell you their evolution started millions and millions of years ago and and then there's different constellations different um you know we say planets um it's a wide cosmos out there so depending on who you're calling god so another one would be god is an extraterrestrial why because god comes and gives you things and technology and tells you things that you're yet to discover or find out so it's like if they have more knowledge in you more intelligence in you then there must be god so imagine a, a primitive person, an extraterrestrial, come, forget an extraterrestrial. Imagine you take your mobile phone and your cameras and everything and go to the most remote village in Africa that has never seen YouTube, don't know about the internet, and you say, look, I am God, I have arrived, let me show you the future, and then you play some movie from your tablet or something, and then you say to them, um, I'm going to give you certain things, I'll, I'll be back next year. You're God to them. Especially if you've got money and you've come and you like, or like they imagine they were having problems with food and you show them how to grow crops. And so the whole thing about God, it depends on what level you're at and what you're referring to as God. The God of the Bible and the God of the Quran and the God of the religious books, as we say, they're walking, talking, making mistakes, um, fighting wars. They, they're telling people to sacrifice and do all kinds of things. And that's why people are confused and get the mental health because they think God is a good guy. It's a loving, caring being, but you're being tricked through technology, um, which is trick knowledge to make you think this is not making sense. You know, how can, how can God be all loving and caring and then he's killing people and doing all these wicked stuff, you know? So your, your perspective on God is all based on the information and knowledge that you have. But would you say that, so you know how people say God, yeah, they just mean like the being or the thing that created everything, so like the plants, the animals, humans and everything, yeah. including extraterrestrials. But there's no one that did that. That's it, what I'm it, saying. It doesn't make sense. So you don't think there's one being that made everything in the beginning that created time and everything like that? No, because this is what I'm saying, like things happen naturally through natural nature and then someone will step in. Because if somebody didn't tell you that, there was this one person that did all of that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be saying that. So what I'm saying is like, okay, in natural nature, you can take a seed, plant it in the ground, and you have to wait. And the elements like the sun, the water, do you know what I mean? Like will make that plant grow. And it will take time before it evolves into, say, a tree and then fruits. In religion, they will say, this person called God, 
just appeared from nowhere, right? And where did he come from? You can't answer the question. But anyway, he's able to go, let there be light and let there be this and let, and he just, it's like he's doing magic tricks. But then he can't do that when you want him to do it. Like, check this out. You'll have shows after shows after shows, yeah? People that, they come on TV and they go, they can talk to people on the other side, yeah? And they can speak to your, you know, people that have passed or crossed over, get information and then give it to you. And then you say to them, okay, since you can do that, and you say, are you a Christian? They say, yeah. All right, can you get Jesus? Let's talk to him so you can get him to give us some information. Or let's speak to God. Since you have that ability, let's speak to God. Let's set up a show where that day the whole world's listening and let God come on there and we'll ask him some questions. They never do that. So it shows you that it's all games and trick knowledge because they can speak to the people that are on the other side I've crossed over but they can't speak to Jesus and they can't speak to God so what's the correct way to bury or like dispose of a deceased person um right again I have to say this because you see when we say we are Sabians or Nuwapians because we have a culture the culture has everything so when you say who is God or what is God we can say our God is Panda Bab Yanun or Dr. Malachi Z. York, yeah? Just like every other race can say, Buddha is my God, or Allah is my God, or, do you know what I mean? Yahweh is my God, or, do you know what I mean? Like, all these names. So, within Wu Sabat, it's easy for us, because we have our own God, we have our own language, we have our own scripture, we have the way we dispose of our deceased, yeah? So, but... Wu Sabat is the most ancient culture where everybody else borrowed from. So you find that even in other cultures, they're going to do similar things to what we do. So to answer the question, in ancient times, we had a whole kind of like process for um, like the deceased where we used to take out the organs. This is where you get the canoptic jars in the ancient Egypt from, right? And... Um, and we knew how to send the energy part of you. This is what the mouth, op the um, opening of the mouth ceremony is about. Yeah, this is channel that energy towards Orion, Orion or Sirius. But now, because we don't have, if you're living in the West and you don't have your own land and your own culture, this is one of the reasons why they took our land or they had to try and steal our land because when you're in your own environment, you can do things the way you're supposed to. But the best way to, to, to do that now is to cremate. Because, because the life is in the blood. Cause so uh, cremations. Yeah. And that's how they should to so not bury the body. Just actually yeah. Cremate them. Right now, because now you don't know what they do. They harvest in the organs. You don't. When once that person is put in that casket and goes, you don't know what's going to happen. They could take all the organs out. They can. Um, the blood is in the marrow of you know the bones inside the bones that's where the blood is the marrow and that can take a long time for it to decompose because your bones have to decompose and your flesh has you know everything decomposes so you're actually still caught here because you're connected to those parts because that's your physical parts yeah so is that what causes ghosts yes well well no the essence of the ghost comes from the the spiritual beings that are still trapped here but the physical bodies on the ground the maggots and everything are starting to like you know, go at it and um, and then it decomposes. So because it takes so long, that's why if you if you burn the body, you kind of like everything goes into the ethers. Everything goes into do you know what I mean, natural nature, and no one can have access to it because this is going to sound crazy, but they're eating a lot of flesh as well. Um, humans, people are eating human body meat, so you don't know, man. They could be digging them up and eating them for you know. So, so can you just define ghosts? Ghost. Okay, so we, we, we have got different realms and there are entities that vibrate on different realms, right? So even within what, like even here and I'm talking to you, there are many frequencies and vibrations that you can't see with the naked eye. Um, if you looked at the electromagnetic spectrum, it tells you, you know, you have from like the lowest form being like electrical energy all the way to gamma rays. And in between, you'll have infrared, you'll have um, ultraviolet. You know, there's many, many, like, in terms of the, the visible spectrum anyway. 
which is like between 400 and 700 nanometers yeah so there are entities that exist and vibrate on those frequencies but you might not be able to see them with the naked eye because either you're not vibrating on that resonance that same frequency but other people who are can see them so when we say ghost we're talking about the physical body is gone but the other essence is still around but it hasn't crossed over or gone to the higher realms it's still roaming around here and you can see them if you have the ability to are they conscious some are some aren't and some utilize you because they can't do it certain things without a physical body the movie ghost actually it's a very good movie with um what's his name um is it swayze yeah patrick swayze i think it is watch that movie ghost that kind of gave you a lot of information another one to watch is called ghost town yeah ghost town they they kind of go into this a lot of this information is common knowledge for those people who have studied it but yeah literally but you have agreeable or disagreeable, agreeable and disagreeable as well, good and bad in other words. Yeah. Do you think the Mehdi spoken about in Islam will come? Is it the Mahdi? Is it Mahdi? The Mahdi. He's yeah, already come. He's already come. He's already come. This is one of the, that's a really good question because it's just like, let's say Jesus, for example, yeah? There are people who are waiting for Jesus and he has already come. There are people who are waiting for the Messiah. There are people who don't believe Yahshua of 2000 years ago was who he is and that he's still coming. So there's a lot of misinterpretation with a lot of things. So like the Mahdi, the Mahdi is actually the grandfather of Dr. York because when Dr. York came on the scene and, and again, when you're of um, that lineage, you can trace your bloodline all the way. Yeah? So like his granddad is um, who they referring to, or sorry, his great grandfather is who they're calling the Mahdi. So when he was on the scene, his name was, he was known in the Islamic world as Isa al Hadi al Mahdi. Yeah, that Mahdi is that, as you can see, so al Hadi would be his dad, and then al Mahdi would, because in Islam, like your name, and in ancient cultures anyway, like we, we, we had names that tells you your bloodline. Do you understand? So um, al Hadi al Mahdi. It's his, his title. And so he came and he passed on the scepter to um, Dr. York. And that's why he's known by different titles over the years in different schools. And the Islamic school is that. But there are people, because in Islam, as you know, there are different sects as well. And um, the, it's just like what I say about Christianity. There's the real Muslims, right? And there's the false ones. And the false ones go back to like the Wahhabi sect and the, the desert Arabs and the people that they're not really about the, what you call the Sufi or the real spiritual aspect of things, yeah? They just like, just wear perfumes, wear robes and instead of doing the, the Hajj, they will pay someone else to do it, you know what I mean? Like, and that's the same in Judaism, the same in Christianity where you have people that are fake and you have people that are real, that are really trying to live that life. And so um, the people that want to tell people to, like, basically the wrong information won't accept. They won't, that's why when, when um, Dr. York came on the scene, if you go back and listen to a lot of the videos on YouTube when he was dealing with, like, the Sunni Muslims, for example, he was given a lot of information showing how the bloodline um, through... Ali was supposed to be the way it's supposed to go but then you had other people that were fighting against the prophet and his family and it, it kind of gone do you know what I mean there's a split so yeah so there are some people are still waiting for the Mahdi but the Mahdi has already come um, and that is you know the Mahdi's oh sorry Dr. York's um, family line going all the way back to the prophet you know, you said about um, when Prophet Muhammad died and then it had the two options. Yeah. Was it that it's like the nephew and it was someone else? Yeah. Which one was... The rightful been... one. Should have been Ali. Why is that? Because of the bloodline and because like you have caliphs that are passed on, do you know what I mean? Through the bloodline from one person to the next. And so that's, if you trace his family line, that's who he was supposed to be. But um, Abu Bakr and them, they basically... Took in because remember, do you know the Prophet Muhammad was actually killed as well. He was poisoned, you know. So 
and that's the same with everyone um, in terms of that's why I keep saying about the Christ and the Antichrist or the real Muslims and the fake Muslims and the real Christians and the fake Christians because there's a truth to everything and there's also a falseness that is being pushed to the world but it's down to every person to try and study and when anyone tries to expose it you know like Salman Rushdie he was trying to teach certain things and he wrote a book called the satanic verses and he came under a lot of stick you know what I mean because when you start to expose certain things in in religion in general whether it's Christianity Islam or Judaism it's like you have opposing forces and people that don't want the truth to get out because obviously it serves their purpose for what you know the control of the people what do you think about the Zoroastrian religion? Well, this is where religion comes from. This is Abraham's father's religion. Um, obviously, you know Abraham's father, Terah, that's what he practiced and that's what Abraham practiced. The, the whole thing about Abraham being a Hebrew came way afterwards uh, because, you know, I mean, he was speaking a language and he had a culture and he was practicing Zoroastrianism before Hebrew came about. Hebrew is when they saw him crossing the Tigris Euphrates River and the people like the Phoenicians that were watching him, they said he's a Ibri. Yeah? A Ibri meaning one who's crossing over and that became Hebrew. And that, that that's how the whole thing comes from, like they say in Judaism. But that ties into the fact that remember the Anunnaki, they were in that region of Mesopotamia, which people are calling like Iraq today. And Abraham was the, their chosen person. That's why even the word Ibri ties into Nibiru, right? Because Nibiru is the craft and Abraham was chosen and um, given the information by the Anunnaki. And, and the Anunnaki stories is what a lot of people are talking about because the Bible comes from the Sumerian tablets, the New Merlish, the Gilgamesh epics, you know, the uh, Hatrahasis, the Akkadian tablets, and this is where all that is coming from. That's why, for example, the Noah story in the Bible is coming from the Utnafishtim story in the Sumerian stories. But that same story is coming from Sinefru or Sinefiru in ancient Egypt. You see, so every character that you see in the Bible and the Quran, they're coming from ancient tablets. You know, so it's like putting the pieces together. And that's why... The book we've wrote, you know, Fast Track Your Spiritual and Conscious Journey, it's able to give you like the different people because when you start from today with the Bible, with the Quran, which is a translation in English, because the originals were destroyed. No one has the original. Um, the Tajweed was, it's a system of Arabic that was introduced, you know, with the Tamabuta and certain like vowels that changed the word, just the same with the English. So what happens is when you're trying to find your way, and you're reading the Bible or the Quran and you're reading it in today's English or today's Quranic Arabic, you get lost because I can go right. Every character, every story in the Quran is taken from the Old Testament or the New Testament. And every story in the Old Testament or the New Testament is taken from the ancient tablets that we've just mentioned, the Sumerian tablets, the Arcadian tablets. And every one of those, you can find a story in ancient Egypt. And the same with the prayer system, everything you can think of. So by the time you get, it's like a, a version of a version of a version of a version and it gets watered down to the point where you want to know, you want to practice and do the right things, but you don't have the correct information. And that's where we come in with setting the record straight on everything, you know, because we don't just speak Arabic and talk about, um, do you know what I mean, Miss Batia. We, we, we basically give you the source. And that's why we will never run out of information because, like I said, we've got a man that's got 76 trillion years of knowledge. And the fact that he's even claiming that, um, I would, you know I mean, you would expect him to be on CNN. But like we say, Dr. York's still alive. Um, he's facing a lot of injustice and we're fighting to get him out um, of incarceration. And people will say this is really important. People will say, if he's good and he's so this, why is he in jail, right? And I will say, name me one prophet, one person that's come to this planet that didn't go through the same thing. Whether it was Gandhi or whether it was Jesus, because Jesus was beaten and, as we said, hung on the cross by so-called men. Um, Muhammad was poisoned, I already mentioned. Um, 
Honorable Elijah Muhammad was killed, Malcolm X was killed, Martin Luther King was killed, persecuted. There's no one that's ever come on the planet to say they're about righteousness that doesn't go through the same fate, you know. So when we say he's God, he's not that God, that spookism God that no one can prove exists, that's in, in the air floating around, and, you know, somewhere. So these are the things that cause mental health problems because you can't prove things, but you want to hold on to it and you want to fight and kill people over your belief. And it's only a belief because when you're challenged on it, like prove it, you know what I mean? How did Muhammad write, ride a donkey to space? You can't. You know, that this is the Burak, if you don't know what I'm talking about, because like people in Islam will know what I'm talking about, yeah? There are certain things you will hear that people say in religion that went, like I mentioned a lot of the Christianity one. I don't really pick on, I think I, I say a lot of things to do with the Bible more than like the, the Quran and stuff, but we're not really picking on anyone. We're just saying like when we read these books and we study them and we analyze them, there are things you're saying that you can't prove that don't make sense. And if I am a, a being that, God knows my intentions and knows my mind and knows what I'm going to say and think before I say it. He should know what question I'm going to ask before I ask it. And he should stop me from asking it if I'm going to make him look silly. Like, you can't be that strong if you can't get rid of the devil and the, the, the you know, all the wickedness on the planet. If you can, please do it by tomorrow morning. Just no more rape, no more murders, no more killing, no more nasty stuff. Just Let's just live peacefully and happy with everyone. Can you do that? Can you kun fire kun, snap your fingers and we get that done by tomorrow? See, these are the type of questions that get under people's skin because it's like you're, it's, you're not making a joke of it, but it's like, come on, let's be for real, for real. Like, you're the God. You know what I mean? Let's do things that make sense. So you see Anunnaki, and obviously they made humans and stuff like that, and they travel in space, but they travel outside of time, yeah? Mm. Does that mean that Enlil and Enki are alive today in 2024? Yeah. The, the thing is, you're alive and you will always be alive because your energy, you never I, die. Not, I, wait, wait, not, I know not what you're energy. asking. I mean, can they come here? Now? Yeah, they can. In physical form? Yeah, they okay. can take on a physical body and come here. That's what I'm saying, like, their technology, yeah? They've, they've learned, or the higher extraterrestrials, they learned that death is a disease. You, you, you don't have to die, you know, like in terms of, and now scientists are starting to learn about telomeres, like which govern how long you live. It's really like op operations, like I can stop or make you live forever. And this is the secret that everyone's trying to find, yeah? because they're trying to find the elixir of life or what they call monatomic gold or why are we able to live for longer than most people, yeah? And the being that has actually done it, they're called Jesus, right? Because he's able to come back and they say he's coming back again and everyone's waiting for him to come back because he's learned the way of coming back, yeah? But that being is really Amun, as I mentioned before, right? And and when they're trying to find this person, they will say Jesus, they will say Isa in Arabic, they will say, you know what I mean, Yeshua, they will say Sananda, all these names, but it's the same being that keeps coming back. And when you end up in Egypt, they say Tut, we say Tut Ankh Amun, but they say Tut and Kamun. But when you really know the language, you're saying Tut Ankh Amun, Amun is that being. And this is why I mentioned before that all religious organizations end their prayers with the word Amin or Amen, or Umain, which is really Amun. Now, Amun is that hidden one, that being that's able to reincarnate and keeps coming back and keeps coming back. And he's, he's already here now. And I'm telling you that in the sense of when you say uh, Amunurubi Ra'akata, or the faithful informer soul of the Pataites, that might go over a lot of people's head, but um, Amun, Nubi, that's that, that's that Amun that we're talking about. And so when you say, can they come back? Yes, your flesh goes to the ground, but the real essence of you, if you know how it can be translated into another being or another person, then you can come back again. And, and this happens when you give birth. When you give, a, when you give a, a, um, birth to a child, what do you think is happening? Because that being is coming through the mother's gates, yeah, um, which is just a portal that's coming back through and that energy being is coming back and then in her stomach 
for nine months, but three months prior to that, that being already exists in an etheric form, and that being grows in the womb. To, the reason they're growing is to get the limbs, you know, the, the, the legs, the arms, the heart, the liver, all of that, because in order to exist on this environment, the physical world, you need to have a body for locomotion. And that's why they do it. And then when they come out, as I was saying to you, you know, your baby is still in the spiritual world, but she's just come and she's getting used to this physical, this physical world. And then as they're growing up, they get taught English or, do you know what I mean? Then they go to the nursery or to school and then they kind of get to learn this world. And then you grow and then when you pass, you go back to where you came from. You Can know? you just speak more about babies still being there in the spiritual? Yeah, because... Um, before you get, like, remember, if you're coming from somewhere else, um, you're an alien. <laughs> like, for example, if you went to another country that you didn't speak that language, you didn't know anything, you'd be like, you be there lost. And someone has to t tell you, oh, this means left, this means right, this means this, and this means thank you, this means please. So, so you're learning and you're learning to walk. Like, what do I do with these legs? <laughs> what do I do with these arms? Like... And if you notice what babies do, they put everything in their mouth because their mouth is able to detect and they can find out from the t energies like, okay, what is this? What is that? So people think they're putting things in their mouth because they're hungry. No, they're, that's their way of like finding out and learning things, you see. So they, they will know, okay, this is this, throw it away. This is, and then eventually as they grow up, they start to learn to use their you know, the larynx, which is to speak, and you'd be like, dada, mama, they start to build on the words. And the things you're giving them to eat, that obviously starts to, you know, affect them. So, yeah, babies are still connected to the spiritual world until they cut off from it. Um, and you never cut off from it because you're still connected to it through your etheric um, cord. The etheric cord is like, you have an unbiblical cord, right, that's connected to the mother, whilst... Um, the baby is in the stomach and that's how the baby gets its food, its nutrients and everything from the mother. And when that baby comes out, that gets severed, right? And you get your belly button. Um, here's a question. Did Adam have a belly button? And did God have a belly button? Because they're men, right? And they would have had to be attached to a woman. But anyway, you also have an etheric cord that's connected to the spiritual world, to your spiritual parents. And so you're still connected until this world makes you kind of like forget about your purpose or why you came here and what that world is all about. You become more physical. But as time goes on, um, you might start getting, do you know what I mean, flashbacks or dreams or like you speak to people, you start to think there's more to this world than what I'm doing. And then you start to get go on your spiritual journey and you might become, you know what I mean, you might go to church with your parents or go to the mosque or, you know, start to find more about that world of what spirituality is. And then they give you this story of, oh, you know, you were created by Allah, you were created by God. And because they can't really explain it. And then as you go through your life, you start to learn and then come across us on OSM Vision. And then we wake you up and take it even higher. And then, yeah, your journey just until you start to do the right things. And then eventually when you pass, you go back to that world if you make it or you just come back and do it all over again. Watch the movie, The Edge of Tomorrow. You just keep coming back and doing it over and over again until you figure it out. And then, um, yeah, hopefully you don't have to come back. So you said, was it 24 to 24,000, you said? Yeah. Does that mean you have to do the 24 at least? No, no, no. You, that's how much times you've got. You've okay. got like, like, you can do it in your first time. You can oh. do it. it might, this might be your 24,000th time. And, and if it is, this is the last chance you've got. So if you don't do it this time... It's over. Is there a way to tell? No, that well, they, the only way I can tell or know is if, if we speak to um, the man who knows or partner Bab Yanun. So, you see, if we reincarnate, yeah. do we only reincarnate into the same bloodline? Yes. Or do we have lots of ancestors like from different oh. parts of the world? And yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, as long as the bloodline... Um, okay. Reincarnate is a word, cardinal means you're coming back in the same body that's why we say when people say reincarnation we don't teach that you're coming back in the same body because we just explain your body decomposes and goes to the ground right so you can never come back in the same body but you can come back through the same bloodline because it's about compatibility 
You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to get a transplant, you're not going to go and get a transplant from somewhere else, are you? You're going to get someone in your family who's got the same blood as you and the same, excuse me, <coughs> same DNA as you. So, yeah, so you come back through the bloodline. And your mother's bloodline is the strongest in terms of where you should come through. Yeah. Does it matter any race or is it just always the mother? Any race. Yeah. Okay. But I'm saying, like, you can come, like, you don't hear when people have children, they're like, that's my grandma. That's the grandpa. He's exactly behaves like that. Yeah, because spirits can be recycled. Okay. This this might be a long one for you, yeah? Okay. But I want a detailed answer, yeah? Okay. Can you just explain Parna Bab Yonun? Yeah. Because I know you say channels Malachi and everything, but can you just explain it? Just explain all of that. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's a very good question. So, um, there's actually, we've got scrolls and books that go into detail, but um, he's a triunion being, meaning that there are three beings in one. Yeah, because tri means three, yeah? So, like, everyone has a birth in the physical world, yeah? That's how we come through here. So, like you and me, he's got a mum and a dad, and the mother and father are Mary Okran, who is from Ghana, a Ghanaian. And then he had his father, who I already mentioned before, was Al Hadi, right? Um, from Sudan. And so his bloodline in the physical world goes back to those two. He also had a stepfather, okay, um, in America. But. Just like me and you, he has a spiritual counterpart and a soul. And that's what I'm saying. Like, those beings are not from here. They, they are within you, but when you, you're connected to them, but when your physical goes, they return. So he's like that, just like anyone else. However, as he was growing up, um, because he actually comes from that bloodline anyway, as in, he goes all the way back to the Magdi, back to the rule Muhammad. Um, and in the book, we show you the fake Muhammad as well, who is Muslimat. And you have the rule Muhammad, yeah, which, who is Ak Ahmed. But anyway, so when you grow and you start to know about you're not just physical, there are spiritual beings or etheric beings that exist. And in our case, this would be who we call the Natharu. This, these are the real gods that, in religion, they've become, do you know what I mean, um, camouflaged by these other extraterrestrials claiming to be gods, which they are to a certain degree. So Yanun is an etheric being, yeah? It's a pure ethereal being, which means a pure energy being, that when Malachi started to... Well, he was told, because he, as a child, he was abducted a lot. And he was taken and shown certain things and he was given certain power. But even before then, the extraterrestrials already chose his parents to see this entity. So they had to choose, just like the whole story of Jesus and Mary and Mary was prepared. Coincidentally, check this out. His mother's name's Mary, right? So Mary in the Bible was prepared for this being to come through known as Yahshua or Jesus, yeah? So in the same way, um, when Dr. York was born through his mother Mary in the Islamic world because his dad was from Sudan uh, um, as in, as I said, through the Makdi family which, which, if you know, it means the guide Yeah, he was prepared to come through those two and in the Islamic world he was known as Isa I already mentioned Isa al-Hadi al-Makdi the Isa is what they call Jesus in the Quran. So a lot of people was like, he thinks he's Jesus because his name was Isa by birth, right? And he was born through a, a, a woman called Mary. And so Yanun is the entity that as he started to grow up and, and then he was doing all these, like he had abilities to do so much different things and people didn't understand um, what was going on and he was being abducted, etc. He was being told who he is and why he's here. And then he started to write books. And when he was writing, writing the books, his pen was being guided. So 
uh, the information when we when you said about the avatar because the word avatar in again it's like um in islamic we would say um illa mutajasid right so it means that an incarnation or somebody that was controlling his pen to put out this information that's why when the books are being written even himself he says he's amazed because his pen is guided by this being and this being is known by many names throughout the ages like michael in the bible yeah or mikhail in arabic or or you know murdoch or murduk or um different names throughout the ages tahuti is one of them right which is thoth um but this being is the one that is the most knowledgeable being and he's written most of the information on the planet. So when Dr. York would read the books back, he would be hearing and reading these things like he's like amazed himself. So when we say Yanun, you have, you have Malachi, you have, um, and again, Malachi is Melchai or Melchizedek, yeah? Malachi Zodok, because Malachi Zodok means the angel of justice. Um, because this being is here to bring about the change in the planet, right? Which is where we're going from this uh, Piscean era to Aquarius era or from the moon cycle to the sun cycle. And this is the same being that has warred with the dragon and his angels. And so um, there's so much information about this being because his being here means that a new cycle, a new way is coming about. And this is why those who listen and read the books, and that's the thing you must do, read the books, because the books are from Yanun. And, and Malachi is just the vessel that houses that being. And how you know, there's no way someone can write information so far ahead of his time, telling us things that are going to happen before they happen, and it's consistent like if anyone was reading the books in the 80s in the 90s or listening to his audio or videos or anything that he put out everything he has ever said from the 60s till today still aligns up there's nothing he said back then that he's not saying now the only difference is that he was teaching it in a particular way through religion when when like because if he came and he did. He tried to give us information about risk and, um, you know, nine ether and all this stuff that in the 60s and everybody was just not ready for it. Shambhala, Nagata, extraterrestrials, three parents' birth, tri-solar systems. I've got 76 trillion years of knowledge. It's like, people was like, yeah, right. But over time, like I said, it's now, what, over 50 years, every single scroll he's ever written, everything he has ever said still collaborates till today. He was first to talk about a lot of things that a lot of people are talking about now. So it's kind of like bear witness to who this being is. Now, of course, people thought he was crazy um, when he was talking about things with extraterrestrial before even the governments knew about it. And so they wanted to know, how do you know all these things? It's almost like, imagine that like you have the FBI, CIA and all these guys that got top secret information, apparently. And then you just put it out in books. They're thinking, how do you know this? But like he's explained, he goes to these intergalactical meetings. He's a, he's a part of the Intergalactical Federation. And a lot of this would have sound crazy to people years ago, but um, in 2024, it isn't. So Yanun is that being. In Arabic, the word Ya means O. And Nun would be like from Nuar or Nur, which means light. So it's like O light. But in ancient times, in ancient Egypt, we're talking about the nun, the waters, um, where we call primordial waters, where you're born out of. And, you know, this, these, these beings are known as nun, nun, nun and nunat, nun, nunet, sorry. Um, and then you come out as a mun, that's the birth, the recycle. And then you go to that position of the sun where we say it's atun. Then you go to the position, sorry, Atum was the first one when you come out of the waters. Then you go to Atum, then you go to Amun. And you have this cycle, this regeneration, this reincarnation of this being called Amun. You see, so um, in ancient times, we knew this. And all of them are part of the order known as Rei or Reye, which is the sun. This is why you heard when he came out, it was known as what? Atum Rei. 
and then it's moved to Atunre, then you go into Amunre, then you go to Anunre, and it's a cycle of regeneration. And and this is the secret that everybody wants to know. Like, how do you live forever and keep coming back and keep coming back? But there are secrets that will not be, you know, shared freely to everyone in terms of you have to be initiated, you have to be put to the test to know that you're able to keep in certain information sacred. Yeah, so that's the being that's on the planet, known as Yanun. Um, and he's here to basically bring us a better world, bringing the good news. But then you have those that, because they, their time has ended, they're trying to survive by any means necessary. And if they can't, they're going to try and destroy the planet or try and take you, take you with them. But it's not, it's not going to work. So this is what we're talking about, the alignment of, being being on the right side, yeah, and and Yanun or Malachi or Mikael or the angel Michael is here for his angels who are going to war against the dragon, the Dragonians and their angels, and one is going to win, and that's going to be Michael's angels, and that's where we're here. We're trying to help by teaching the right knowledge, the right wisdom, and the right understanding. So you can like learn how to think properly, then you go to what we call sound right reasoning. And that's where you need to be at because when you're reasoning correctly, everything else will follow and you, you'll be um, able to basically live the way you're supposed to as a, as a righteous being. So you know how you just said Michael's angels? Yeah. What's an angel? Because a lot of people would think it's like a normal person with wings and a white gown. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Thank you for so clarifying what, what that. What is an actual angel? You are an angel. Was, Your lovely wife's say, so an angel. Are you one of Malachi's angels? Then? Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Angels are not these spooked, fictitious characters with like wings. I've and seen the, the biblically accurate angels where it's like the, the ring of just eyes yeah, and it's like a few rings of eyes. Is that anything to do with angels or is that just a misinterpretation? Yeah, in the sense that your eyes are your um, they say your eyes are your um, it's like windows wheel. to the soul. It's yeah. a, the one I'm talking about is a wheel and a wheel and I think yeah. it's like the wheels of, of I know, the but that's symbology character. though. I'm trying to explain it. Like, okay. because it's circles within circles within circles yeah, basically. Yeah. And as you start opening up the knowledge, you see there's more, there's always more, and there's always more, and there's always more. And not all of it's going to be like just given to anyone. This is where Jesus was like, you cannot take um, pearls and throw them to swines, you know what I mean? Because you have, to be, you have to be about it. You have to raise yourself. You have to be clean spiritually. You have to be like about... Not the fake in the funk thing, do you know what I mean? Like, not just, oh, standing in church and, like, clap tambourines and all of that, or going to the mosque and wearing oils. And No, it's about real spiritual work. It's about your heart, your love, the care. Any being in any race that comes with that type of energy, I mentioned, like, you know, Gandhi or whoever, like, this is across every, every race has been given someone what they would call an angel. Even, like, the Mormons with Joseph Smith, do you know what I mean? Or... Um, Jesus or you know anyone who's come across um, because they all in agreement all the like spiritual people um, who've come to the planet to teach the truth they're in alignment it's only where people go against the truth that's the problem so yeah you're right that the eyes open up your third eye the real eyes for you to realize that your eyes will give you um access to certain information scroll of eyes yeah check this out um we actually have the scroll of eyes here and that is what we telling you in terms of our scripture and our information so most of the information is coming out from that from that massive scroll called the scroll of eyes known as right knowledge right wisdom actual facts master secrets and that's where that information is coming from. But yeah, it's not like a angels are, anyone with the eyes and the ability to see the truth and live the truth. As you know, earlier we said that the, the Mahdi, is it Mehdi, Mahdi, how do you say it? Mahdi. The Mahdi, yeah, yeah, has come. Yeah. Does that mean Jesus has come already? And what is the importance of them all? See, the thing is, the word, okay, the importance of them all, like the word Jesus means what? Saviour. 
So people claim that Jesus has come. But if he has, and his whole journey, because remember your name tells you what your, your mission is or what you're about, right? So if you're named a savior and you haven't saved everyone, and you haven't saved yourself, how are you the saviour? Yeah, so many saviours will claim to have come, but what are you being saved or saved from? Or, like, that's what I'm saying. So in order to answer that question, they're here to save humanity or to direct you to the right path, to get you back on the right, they say in Arabic, surat al-mustaqim, yeah? So it's like... The righteous path or the righteous way. So, um, different people have been sent their warners over time, and now we're in the last days, and it says that the the first shall be the last, and he has been sent to us, as in the Negroid race, but for the whole world. Just like even though Muhammad was sent to the tribe or the Quraysh, his message is a universal message in terms of if you live truth. The same thing you can say with Jesus. Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But anyone that lived by those words, the truth, it's a good thing. So all the prophets were sent to guide their people onto the righteous path or to the right way. But not everybody listens. And some of them, they try to even kill them or get rid of them. And, and that's mostly what happens. Even now, the fact that Malachi is incarcerated. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's not a coincidence. And so, but the truth will reign. The truth will always prevail. So um, it was just that, obviously, each one was doing a, 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 a furlong or a lap, if you want to look at it that way. And then now we're on the last lap and Malachi is here to finish the race. So is, is Malachi a version of Jesus? No, because that's what I'm trying to say. Well, well, you could, if you, this English is the problem, right? Yeah. When you say a version of Jesus, if you say a version of a savior, you see what I mean? That makes more sense because the word Jesus comes from the word Yeshua, which means savior. And he is here to save people. And um, so in that regard, yes. But, but th what religious people do is they try to claim it to be one person, that only one person can do this. But if you save your friend, like from whatever, or you know, one of your family members, you're their savior. You see, so it's not it's not as deep as like they make it, but obviously there's somebody who will be like who has more information than everyone else, and that's why I said at the beginning he's the only one who's come on the planet claiming to have seventy six trillion years of knowledge. Now you might say trillion years, you can't even live to a hundred and fifty years old. So trillions, not even millions, you know, or billions, but trillions. You're thinking, how is that possible? But the thing is, that's because you're using the time that you know. Like what you know as a year, it's not a year somewhere else that's not being governed by the planet rotating around the sun to give you 365 days in a year. So depending on what time zone you're using to make the calculation, it's going to be different because in the Bible it says one day is like a thousand, unto the Lord, like a thousand years. So... Whereas one day to you, it's a thousand years to them. So then if it's seven days to you, it's going to be 7,000 years. You see what I'm saying? So it all depends on where you're coming from in terms of information. And you're talking about beings that, have, that live way beyond our, do you know what I mean, comprehension of what we call time. So in the Quran, yeah, it says Alif Lam Mim. And mm. that's like one of the only things that isn't translated. Yeah. Is there a translation for that? Yeah, that's why when I hold up when I hold up the Quran, it was shows. I'm going with me. Remember I showed it to you yeah, last, time. Yeah. last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in there because he breaks it. That's what I'm saying. Like he breaks it all down. I'm trying to remember if I can even remember what he broke. Alif Lam Mim. He broke it down. There's a there's even a recording on YouTube on it, but it escapes me right now. But um, I will find it for you for the for the next one, or you can get the Injil or. Go on YouTube and just search Dr. Malachi Z York and look at, um, like you can look at um, any of the recordings where he's talking about Sunni Muslims, he, he goes into it. But yeah, he's broken that down years ago. And I know Sikhs, uh, they don't cut their hair because they think it's like a gift from God. Mm. It's like a sixth sense. 
So I was talking to my Sikh friend about it. Yeah. And I know that you guys have your hair in a certain way. So you've got the one plait at the back mm. and the women have the plaits on the side. Yeah. Is it just to represent Wusabat or does it have like a deeper meaning? Like how they say it's a sixth sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said to you, everything you find, you will trace its roots right back to Wusabat. And that's because your hair is an antenna, right? And for us as, as Negroids, we are the only people on the planet with hair. That sounds crazy, right? But every race has a unique trait. And, and for us, that's the hair. And this is why when in the 70s, 60s, people used to wear Afro. Like if you look at a Jackson 5 or any, like, because that was a unique hair for us. But obviously over time, people started to like get rid of their hair. And that, that ties into your question because as an antenna, you receive an information or out formation from outside in. And your hair was like that antenna to receive the information. But what it is, is that the people that didn't want you to receive this information, um, they kind of taught you to destroy your hair, thinking that that will cut off that, that connection to the spiritual and to the higher beings or the ethereans. But they did, what they didn't realise, this is why they made people to start straightening their hair, perming their hair. And to this day, you have a lot of, Black people that don't like to wear their hair natural anymore. They want to relax it or whatever. So, and in the Bible, when it talks about um, Samson, Samson or Samson and Delilah, it's about his hair because it's like she had to get him to cut his hair to lose his strength. Yeah. Um, but the point is that it's not outside. It's inside your head, right? Because your hair grows from inside your scalp and comes out. So, so just because you don't have hair or if you cut off the hair doesn't mean that you're not still able to receive that information because it goes inside. And this is why when they realized that even though we were damaging our hair, it still didn't stop us from connecting. And so they, they started to give you destructive tones, vibrations and frequencies or music, bad music, because then that reaches into, do you know what I mean, your, the frequency. Um, but yeah, that ties in with the fact that the melanin and the stuff in your hair is, is so potent to receive information, but that doesn't mean that you won't receive information without having any hair. But we wear our majal, which is the, the lock you're talking about, we wear that because, like I explained before, it does have a connection to what you've, what you've just asked, but it also ties into the fact that it, it ties into your um, oblongata, um, which ties into the pituitary gland, which ties into opening up your pineal gland. Yeah, so it all relates. This is uh, going back to the babies. Yeah. Uh, what should we do with our placenta after birth? Excellent question. Again, that's something that they, they try to stop you from taking. When you're um, in the hospital, for example, you should request it and you will see when you try to request it how much resistance they give you but you should request it, you're meant to take it home and um, if you have the facility, if you don't, if you have a garden, you're meant to put it like, um, put it back to the earth, and grow a tree and grow flowers, you know, something like that, so it actually goes back to the earth. If you can't, you can get a big um, flower pot and do it that way as well. Um, but it's all about retaining that energy because it's connected to you and um, it's got a little potency in it as well. You know, um, yeah, so try and keep it if if you can. Why would any other beings want to destroy the planet as well? What's in it for them and is it just for pleasure? Um, it's kind of like what we were saying about jealousy and envy and, you know what I mean, ego and things like that because it's like, have you never had a situation where this is what they call bad mind? Like someone says, if I'm not going to have that, you ain't going to have it. So I'm going to mash it up so you don't get it. As long as I don't have it, you're not having it. It's more kind of that thing because some being believe that the planet belongs to them. Um, they, it's greed, isn't it? It's like some people, like if you're progressive or doing something, let's say you have a nice car and they want a nice car. Instead of working and getting their car, they will look at you and feel, oh, you think you're all that because you've got a nice car. Then they might try and smash your glass, your, you know what I mean, your windows and cut your tyres, scratch up your car, just because they don't have it and you've got it, when they don't even know how you got it 
how much effort or work you put into it. So that comes from that whole disagreeable six E for force that makes people like think that way, which is a very negative way. It's like very destructive. Yeah. So it's really about, you know, like these beings, they believe that they should have it. And the thing is, why would you want to take it all as opposed to sharing? Do you know what I mean? Like there's some beings that are like, let's just share the planet. Let's keep it, you know, clean. Let's make sure that the atmosphere is good. We don't, but no, some other people are just motivated by money and greed. So they want to be like, imagine there's enough food to feed the whole world, but someone will go, no, let's make it so that I own all the farms and I supply the food and I get all the riches so that no one else has food. It's like, that's that negative 60 for thinking. So why not sharing the power as opposed to wanting to have it all? And that just goes to that, those, those disagreeable beings and the greed. So will this planet ever end? It can. And, and that's why I said, that I think the last video we did, I'm saying how serious it is right now, where we're at, where beings have the ability to, to actually blow up this planet. And imagine that you're talking about 7 billion people and you have other beings in the waters and in the caverns and do you know what I mean? It's like, so there are other beings also who will step in and, and not, you know what I mean? And prevent this from happening. This is what this is all about. And Mageddon actually deals with that. This is what the book of Revelation is talking about. The end times and this, this war that is going to be the like, the final war between good and bad or agreeable and disagreeable or those people who are going in a particular direction against those who are trying to destroy it. So this is why we say with Wu Sabat, it helps you to get on the right path. It helps us to protect the planet. It helps us to like wake up people so they do things that make sense. You know, not just like you're just in the world, but you know, like not even aware what's going on and you're being used as a tool, as a weapon to kind of make things bad for all of us. Are octopuses aliens or were they here before humans making us the aliens? So octopuses basically, because you know how they're yeah. intelligent. Yeah. Are they the aliens or are they native? It's funny. Yeah, it's funny when we say aliens and we try to say other beings are aliens as, as we're not the aliens. Yeah, you're right. Like there are many beings. That's a, it's a really good point because when we say beings, a lot of us, only think of humanoid beings like us but like you say there's beings that have been living in the seas for millions of years the dolphin for example dolphins are more intelligent and clever than most of us and we are from them and they this is why people know that when you go see dolphins some people are able to like um, communicate with them um, they use something called echolocation which is vibration sounds and frequencies to kind of like communicate or know like directions and stuff like that so yeah you got mammals and like huge like whales and certain like octopuses and stuff that have been here for millions and millions of years before we evolved because remember we came from the waters as well so if we were all in the water and they're like bigger and like been there for so long we would have been in the water and then come after them you see so um yeah this planet that's what i'm saying that some of these beings have been here for millions of years and they're like this is our planet it's a water planet but people call it the earth it's more water than it is earth because you live in a biosphere of water where you're breathing oxygen oxygen is water you know what i mean hydrogen is water you can hear the every time you hear hydro you're dealing with water so it is a water planet and we are quite a young species in terms of our evolution um yeah so yeah that question is yeah on point my last question, can mm -hmm. you show me some extraterrestrials? Can I show you some extraterrestrials? Yes. Okay, so this is the Deros. Look, this calendar was from 1996. And um, these are the Deros. There's a lot of information about them there as well. And um, So what is this, an actual calendar? Yeah, it was our calendar that has our, because we've got our own like, time in it and everything. So um, these are the Deros. The leader of the Deros is, there he is. Yabaha. Then this is the Teros. The Teros, their leaders, Lamasa, Lamsa, sorry. And then this is the Anunnaki, some of the Anunnaki. We've got Nagao, Arishkigao, Ninti, Enlil, Ishtar, Enki, and then um, 
Ninki as well. These are the Procyons or beings from Procyon. And this is the Ashtar command, beings from Pleiades. Yeah, then you have the Flugorods. Yeah, this is a leader of the Flugorods. His name's Korg. And that's the Flugorods there. Again, all of them have information about who they are, what they look like, what they do. Then this is the scientist known as the Vritskians. This is Yanun you were asking me about. Yeah, he came to break the spell of ignorance. All right. And this, these are other Riskians, or who we call the Shuyuk. They're the elders of the Riskians, or the scientists. Then you have the Donakil. Yeah, their leader is, um, there you can see it there, Fukua. Uh, then you have the Duanis. Yeah, these are very intelligent beings, even though, you know, they look like, you know, you wouldn't even think that they're that intelligent. And their leader is... Um, Sinclair, leader of the Duanis, that's what they look like. And you've seen a lot of people are using our pictures now in their scrolls and their videos and stuff. And then, here you go, this is different ones. This is called, this Pickle Man, Hatton, um, the creature from the Black Lagoon. These are reptilians. Then you have other reptilians. Because there's different types of reptilians. This is a predator being. Remember, this book was out way, way before the movies. That's the predator being. Then you've got beings from Syrians, which people call the big, Bigfoot. Yeah, they're from Orion as well. Um, you say they're from Orion? Yeah. Is that the same place as... Yeah, it's York? a constellation. Remember, a constellation um, has many different, you know, parts. The Greys, the Malkadians... Um, sorry, the Meldekians, then you've got other ones, Echelon, then you have the Maccabians. This is what most people see, they call. They just call them the Greys. And that's it. I mean, there's more, but that's in the calendar, that's what we cover. Any more? I can't, there's a couple more, just to, I'll wrap it up. Yeah. How do you use crystals? You know what? Uh, again, people say things like, how do you use crystals? But crystals use you. <laughs> right so what do i mean by that like um okay so they emit different types of vibration and frequency yeah the crystals yeah yeah um so like if you have something wrong with you a certain crystal can heal that um but you need to know which crystal and the reason i say they use you is because when you have a crystal people will tell you that i've had crystals or use crystals that when you lose that crystal, it's when it's done its job. So you could have a particular crystal that you carry around with you to help you do something like, I guess, say like you're being quite negative and you get a, a crystal that will help you be more balanced or more positive. You'll find that when you lose that crystal, it's when it's done its job and then it goes on to someone else. And then you'll get another crystal that will do certain things. And if you have certain crystals that, like if you have a crystal that will keep you calm all the time, then you carry that all with you all the time. And you just kind of like calm. But they do different things, but they basically recalibrate your, your being, your energy centers. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, you have your aura, which is based on how your seats are vibrating, what your state of mind is, which create the mood that gives you your, what people term the aura. So they can help to balance out where you're deficient in something, yeah? Um, we have a whole book on crystals and we have a, a list of like what different crystals do, but um, even like the pyramids, they would use, um, you know, a lot of crystals were used in them to help with the energy. But like the best example I can give you of what crystals can do is like, um, you know what tachyon energy is? Tachyon, no. it's like, it's like the ether that holds things together, even like the atoms. So when you look at um, everything, ultimately comes down to your DNA. And when you look at a DNA um, strand, it will have two sides, which people call, and then you'll have like the stairways or the staircase between there, which is your ACGT, um, which basically are co different combinations that will bring different outcomes in your genome. And so, um, yeah, that like 
the, the crystals were used to balance everything. So the tachyon energy is what you call standard columnar wave. It basically does that, like it twists between. And that basically helps to transform your being from being a negative, negative aura. Because auras will change the mood. Like if you're a very negative person and you walk into a room of you know, people that are highly positive on, on a high vibration, you can bring that mood down because that energy now is going to interfere with the frequency of the room and vice versa. So what you do is by rechanneling, because you, use, you can use like um, capacitors and conductors, which like water, for example, um, it's a good conductor, you then transform the energy so you can go from a negative negative to a positive negative to a positive positive. And this is something that crystals can also help you with. Yeah, so if you watch the Avatar, um, it's a cartoon, but there's a movie as well. It kind of shows you about the, the different elements, which people... Did you ever watch a movie, The Fifth Element? I've, I've heard of it. Yeah. I I, yeah, someone had said something in the comments about we're always mentioning movies, yeah? And I thought, yeah, that was we need to address it. We don't spend all our time watching movies. It's just that Hollywood which is a whole different story. We've got to probably do a video on Hollywood, right? But they put out movies, not by coincidence, right? They use movies as a way to educate the masses. And actors get paid money, even if they don't, even if that movie doesn't get released, they get paid. Because the way the industry is set up is that they already get funding and backing and budgets, and they insure that money anyway. So whether the film flops or not, the insurance is still going to pay for the money. And the actors, everybody gets paid. So they use movies as a medium to educate the masses. And so the reason we mention movies is because with a movie, it's like it might be an hour or two hours long movie. You're going to learn so much in that short space of time because they're using all your, like, your senses, like you're seeing it visually, you're hearing the sounds, you're, you know what I mean, you're, you're, you're seeing everything, it's all like, and they're using the sound effects so they can really tell you a story in a short period of time about things that if you had to read a book, it would probably take you a couple of months to read that book. And so we, we give you these movies as a way of, all right, watch these movies, get a gist, and then you can carry on doing your research, you know. So it's important to men mention that because somebody said something in the comments about we always mentioning movies. Yeah, so um, I mentioned, um, what movie did I just mention? <laughs> the Fifth Element, yeah. And I was like, most people know the four elements, isn't it? Which is earth, wind, fire, fire and, the water. and yeah, the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, how many is that? That's four. Why is the movie called The Fifth Element? Because it must be a fifth one. Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is The Fifth Element? I can't tell you. In the movie, they tell you. But the fifth element is love. Okay. But that divine love, because even though they got all the elements going, they couldn't solve the riddle until Bruce Willis again. He's in Armageddon as well, isn't it? Bruce Willis and um, the lady that came from, she was an extraterrestrial, came from somewhere else and all of that. Um, is this that? The and they had to go in. Boom, that film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, the one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the orange hair or something. That's right. Yeah, yeah. She was that. meant to be an extraterrestrial that's come okay. here to warn us about what's going to happen, like we were saying before. But anyway, they, they kiss in it, and yeah. that was the fifth element. Okay. But that actually goes beyond, you know, what they're telling you in the movies. But yeah, so, um, yeah, so the, these elements were, were part of, like I said, like how you can ch transform and change things. And love is that, that one that everybody talks about, being the love seat. This is the last, last question for today. Okay. It's, it's a bit random compared to what we were just talking about. But yes. Yeah. Some Muslims, they bury fingernail cuttings. So mm. is there any logic behind that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it ties back down to DNA. Because the, anybody can take your DNA, any part of you, like your hair, um, and clone you. Or do, like, bring, like, do certain things with you. So even your spit, you know, people walk and spit on the floor and stuff like that. Like, this is why even with, like, when they're trying to find out if someone is someone's parent, or whether they take the swab and they do, like they get the saliva from your mouth and then they do the DNA testing. So every part of you, whether it's your fingernail, your hair, if if those who know, they can take that and clone you. So so people um, try to even like you were saying about the placenta and things like that. Um, although we know certain people, they like to to eat these things. 
Um, so yeah, that's why we say, yeah, make sure you can take it. But any part of you um, is connecting you to your DNA and they can do all sorts with you. So it's important to keep, that's why like when, um, who was it? Yeah, it was, um, I saw on the news the other day, they were saying that Putin, mm -hmm. when he goes and travels, he doesn't even go to toilet. Like they have to carry in a briefcase or something because he doesn't want anybody to take his <laughs> thesis and see what he, what he eats or what's okay. in his DNA and all of that. I thought that was crazy, yeah, but I understand it, yeah. I, I understand why he's saying that. And the okay. bloodlines of like the royal family and the you know people in power, like prime ministers and presidents, they try to keep it pure by basically not mixing with anyone. Yeah. So that, I mean, I'm saying that's, that would make sense with the fingernails. Um, because remember that your fingernails are alive. So even when you get buried, when you like, cross over your nails still grow like they dig up you know what i mean like um you know what i mean people that have been buried they see that their nails and their hair are still growing even though their real their essence is no longer there so that kind of makes sense cool. but you can't obviously be paranoid with everything as well because people are going to be like i'm not going to spit anymore and i'm not going to you know but just keep it within your control in it as much as possible even when you give blood and all these things, you really don't know what they're doing with it. And then lastly, yeah, where can people find you? Because I get emails every day. Do you know day what? Yeah, you. this is a good one. Um, I'm gonna set. We're gonna we got an Instagram account. We're gonna get it active. But at the moment, I'm on TikTok definitely. Um, I've, I haven't been posting, and everyone, I've got videos that I've got to put up. Like, so bear with me. They're coming. But definitely look at the videos from OSM Vision. Look at the comments. We have our contacts on there. Um, the website's going to be on there, email, um, TikTok. And like we're saying, our platform is also coming. So um, for now, just, yeah. Some people find my number. I don't know how they do, but they do find it. It's on the websites and stuff. So, yeah, you can connect with us um, through the number, through the email, through TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a lot of messages, even on my WhatsApp. There's people from Canada, but yeah. a lot of them are from Africa. Like yeah. Different places in Africa asking, when are you coming? So they want to know yeah. where you go in Africa. I, I, I said it already. I think, do you know what? Yeah, this is going to be interesting that I go in the comments and I respond to people, but people don't know it's me. Okay. You can work it out if you, if you look at my name, but yeah. I do respond and I saw some of those comments and like, we'll come anywhere as long as we can be catered for, you know, security, we've got a place to stay. Um, you know, you arrange the venue and people are going to be there. Yeah, we'll come and teach. We we go anywhere in the world to teach. So, you know what I mean? If you want to do that, reach out to us. Let's let's get it done. Let's plan it. And then what's your website? ds4s.net or nashat.co.uk. Yeah, that will be in the comments as well. All right. Pleasure as usual to speak to you. Wait till the next one. We should be doing another one very soon. <laughs>